we can divide um, immunotherapies uh, in multiple myeloma into two categories. Um, there are those which we would refer to as passive immunotherapy, where these, uh, where the effects of the drug are directly on the myeloma cell, uh, and that would include, for example, monoclonal antibodies such as daratumumab, which are directed specifically um, at the at a target on the myeloma cell, um, and um, um, active immunotherapies, um, therapies which are. Uh, designed specifically more to upregulate the immune system and um, uh, and to use the immune system itself to attack the myeloma cell. Uh, for example, um, um, checkpoint inhibitors, which are being commonly, which are uh, which are being developed not just in multiple myeloma but in solid tumor oncology as well. Though, as we've heard, the lines between these two categories are actually more fluid than you might than you might think. So I remember Dr. Mateo spoke about the three uh, anti CD38 antibodies that are in clinical development right now. Uh, obviously, daratumumab that has now a phase three data in uh, relapse refractory and now in first line with the Maya study. Uh, she spoke about isatuximab, which is another um, anti CD38 antibody that uh, is now. Uh, uh, has some phase one, phase two data, and now is going into phase three with a uh, combination with pomalidomide dexamethasone. And sort of the last one on the block was MOR202, which is again in phase one and two. And uh, she mentioned some uh, mechanisms of actions in terms of differences between the two, b between the three drugs. Uh, there was a couple of stuff that she mentioned, which was some subtle differences in mechanism of action. For example, uh, she mentioned that daratumumab has a, m a more priority a complement mediated uh, cytotoxicity, whereas isatuximab works more towards um, by increasing direct apoptosis without needing cross-linking and the MOR202 molecule mentioned she mentioned that it was more via the NK cells and phagocytosis so while the three drugs are, are anti-CD38 antibodies their mechanism of action is slightly different um, and I think there's some clinical correlates to, correlates to this uh, to this as well yeah I think one of the interesting questions if in fact these do have somewhat different mechanisms of action is whether in fact um, they um, that whether in fact patients who are resistant to one of these monoclonal antibodies might in fact be able to respond to another uh, subsequently